I arrived a couple of days ago in the Philippines, staying at this lovely hotel uh, called Glory Hotel Cabal. This is uh, the reception here in the hotel. This here, uh, hi, hi. this is here is Randy. Yeah, he's the doorman. He's from Tondo. Yeah, I'll check good. you later. This is a grab waiting for me. As you guys probably know, grab is a very popular way to get around in Southeast Asia. So you just book it through the app and here we go. Hello, sir. Manila, this is from outside of the car. Well, we're gonna go on foot, but not right now. Right now I'm taking some stuff with me because I got an appointment actually. I'll tell you guys a little bit about it when we get there. So sir, uh, how long have you been uh, have you been living in Manila? Me? Yes. Uh, one year. All right, so you're from uh, another province? Yes. Ah, okay, you come here to work. I'm from Revesia. Revesia, okay. Norte, you know, north. The north of, uh, of the Philippines. I live, ah, uh, yes, I live in Marikina. Marikina, okay. I've never heard of it. I just arrived three days ago. Uh, Completely new to Philippines. Where are you from, sir? I'm from uh, Europe, Netherlands, uh, Holland. Ah, uh, you YouTuber? Yes, I'm starting. Uh, <laughs> starting with the YouTube channels. I'm going to Tondo tomorrow. Ah, Tondo. Yeah, uh, to Happy Land. Tondo is the interesting. <laughs> yes, I think so. Yes. So I, uh, they advised me to go to the barangay first yes, yes. and talk to those people, get permission. If they say okay, I can go there. And uh, I'm really interested in the life of people there. You know. Yeah. Bad place, but uh, many, many poor. I buy presents too. Ah. I buy uh, vodka. <laughs> vodka. <laughs> I, I buy chocolate, you know, <laughs> because I was born in Russia. Ah. I was born in Moscow, and then I come to Holland when I was a child. In Moscow, in Russia, always when you go somewhere, uh, guest, uh. you always bring vodka. Do you drink alcohol? Yes. But uh, I'm a beer only beer. Only beer, uh, only light. Only light. Uh, okay. One a day. Oh, uh, oh. Before, uh, after uh, work. Just one beer. Uh, one beer. Uh, no, no travel tomorrow. Mm. No work tomorrow. Two, two bad beers. <laughs> only two? Uh, yes, yes. Never three? Never. <laughs> you get too drunk when you drink. Yes, uh, strong. Ah, it's big, strong uh, beer. Yeah, strong yeah. beer. I, I work. Yeah, of course, of course. You cannot drink and work. It's. Uh, I tried that in the past. It was not a very big success. Yeah, well, what you just saw is these contrasts of Manila. So you have a Porsche, Maserati dealers. Actually, this Maserati dealer is completely empty. And then the next uh, next building is just yeah, a bit more simple little stores. It's a city of contrasts. That's my first impression of it. So do you like Manila more or do you like your own city more? I like uh, my province. You like your province? Yes. No, not a lot of Manila cars. is uh, money, money. Mm, you just come here to earn money. Uh, earn money only. How, how many people do you think percent is like you? Uh, 40 percent? 40 percent, wow. Oh, baby, eh? oh, a lot, yes. Many, many. I know, province, but province. Mm. Yes. Same as many other countries, like um, uh, people are coming to the big city yes. to earn money. But they all say, uh, most of them, I want to live back home. Not a lot of cars, probably, huh? Better air, better nature, family, everything is there for you, right? Yes. Yeah. How, how often do you go back to your to your family? Maybe next year. Next year? Mm. Oh. I will... Uh, so once a year, two times a year? Uh, once a uh, two times a year. Only two times, wow. It must be difficult for you, huh? Not to see your family uh, yes. all this time. You got some of the more modern buildings here. Yes. Big, uh, big 
this the business district. Uh, business uh, place. Yes. Tomorrow, good luck, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that will luck to Tondo. Yeah, that that'll be okay. But don't uh, don't scare because uh, many 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 heart is. Uh, I I come with uh, with respect and interest and uh, I expect no problems there. Maybe no problem. Pro uh, night is a <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> danger. <laughs> and uh, if there will be problems, I run. <laughs> Raining uh, for the past couple of days. Yes, uh, rain and snow good to my work. Oh, yeah, because everything goes slow, huh? The traffic. Yes, and many traffic Baha. jams. You know, you know, Baha? water, water. Yeah, water. It's Baha. Manila. It's number one, Manila. Ba is water. Uh, ah, okay. Baha is water. No, I know. Baha. Yeah, I tried to uh, book a Grab taxi from the mall two uh, days ago. Two days ago? Not possible. Uh -huh. I wait for two hours. Uh, can't find driver, can't find driver. <laughs> Nobody. Because uh, Because of water. Baha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baha. Because of the bar. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. You have also Joy, right? Of course. There's these guys over there. They're scooters. Yes. It's a little less comfortable. Uh, Joy ride is many, many. Yep, it's cheap, right? Yes. Cheap, but on a bike. You know, usually I rent a bike myself. Uh, but, uh, you know, in Manila, I like in Thailand, in Bangkok, I don't, I don't like driving bike. Yes. I, I like driving in province. Th that's why I like driving bike. Manila is many, many accidents, huh? Danger. That's right. I think more dangerous than Tondo is traffic. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. It's so sad, but I'm going to do an item about an actual shopping mall. Now you guys think, you know, like, a shopping mall, why? Is this the best item that you can come up with? Well, I think it is very interesting because it reflects on the shopping culture of one country, which is, of course, in our day and age, a very important part of human civilization. Now, this um, is one of the SM malls, which is super malls, SM, yeah. There are 90 SM malls in total, which 83 are situated in the Philippines. And this one is called the Mega Mall. You no, know, it's quite big. It's got uh, more than 5 million square feet of shopping area. Uh, in meters, that will be about 500,000 square meters. You can get lost in it, and so I did, because I actually been here a couple of days ago to buy this here camera. Is it working all right, guys? I think it does. I know what people in America probably would say. I mean, you call that a mall, you should see our mall back in Milwaukee. That's a mall. Our people even from other major cities, such as Hong Kong, will not be too impressed. Now, why am I doing this item? Uh, we haven't been hunter-gatherers for a long time. We're consumers, right? That's what we do. We buy stuff as human beings nowadays. We love the smell of commerce in the morning. And I think that, you know, filming a shopping mall reflects on the shopping culture and thus on the culture itself. Also, a mall is a mall, but still, there are always these small differences, right? And we as travelers, we love those small differences. It's those small differences that feed us, that inspire us, that interest us. I was here a couple of days before at this mall, and, um, you know, I got a small introduction about how the Filipino culture works when it comes to, you know, bureaucracy, when it comes to getting official permissions, when it comes to getting stuff done on an administrative level. And it was pretty harsh, you know. I went in two times to change some money. The first time was to change 200 euros. And the second time I decided to time that and actually just, you know, sort of enjoy the show, so to speak. I uh, wanted to change an amount of 400 euros to pay for this camera. And um, it took me 32 minutes and 14 signatures. <laughs> so I was very um, careful with the fact, just not walking into a mall with a camera, it's not allowed. You know, you need like special permission. You need special permission to film minors. You need special permission to film within organizations or stores. So I just walked in and walked up to the first security guard. There are a lot of security guards here. I'll do an item about that too. And they were actually pretty friendly. They took me to um, the management office of the security. They introduced me to the manager over there and he made a couple of calls. 
and they were actually pretty happy. They said, hey, we're really glad that you are one to film uh, about Manila to show uh, you know, our, our beautiful mall that we have here. And not only will we give you permission, we will make sure that somebody goes with you to escort you through that mall. A security guard, that is. I got a lot of questions and uh, perhaps I could even buy them lunch or something. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, I, I'll just go in. Maybe they'll make, my, uh, make me turn the camera off because everybody has to go to this little security process before coming into the mall. Everybody has to go through a metal detector and everybody has to get their bags checked. Uh, they are very wary of terrorist attacks and stuff like this in the Philippines. So uh, it's understandable that they are being careful to do this. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. I'll check you guys later. For a simple European guy like me, the size of this mall can be intimidating in terms of navigating around it. So if you go to the mall for the first time, I suggest that you use like Google Maps just to see in which direction you're going. Otherwise, you'll be going in circles like I did a couple days ago. Anyway, we'll see how the security reacts when I'll come in. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. So, I was here two days ago uh, and uh, I got, I, I got permit. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you. I got permission from uh, from your colleagues from the uh, management office to film. Can you come with me to the management office, uh, to the security office? So they promised that a security guard would come with me. So. Sir, how are you doing? You remember me? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. They told me. Yes. All right. Thanks. Right. You know, sir, it would be uh, great if uh, you could give me somebody who uh, speaks English that I can ask questions, like a security guard. Uh, anyway, we will just call our officer so that uh, they may uh, talk to. Uh, Cool, thank you. Thank you, sir. See how it goes. <laughs> the alert status is blue, so I think we'll be good. Blue is good, right? Blue or white? Ah, oh, I get it. It's uh, it's the, the the flag of the Philippines. The the colors of the flag. I assume that red would not be good. <laughs> All kinds of uh, emergency procedures here. Interesting. That's the guy that we just saw. He's a he's asking for a security guard. They're talking about me. Paranoia kicking in. What? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get <laughs> I didn't get the guide, the security guide, guard, however you want to call it. Uh, understandable though, because they have an event going on at this point. So, um, everybody's pretty busy. I'm gonna do the thing by myself then. Hello, hello. hello. Do you need sir. to check or am I good? Check, sir. Yes. Everything is always checked thoroughly. Yes. yes. We're good to go. All right, thank you, thank you. This mall is like a... Uh, like a small village, you know? It just keeps going and going and going. And um, yeah, I think you gotta, you know, you know, walk through it a couple of times at least before you get an idea of where to go and how to navigate within this thing.
big supermarket here as well and they don't I mean they have several food courts right so usually the malls that I know is that they have uh, a floor and they have it here as well they have a huge food court but they have you know it's it just scattered it's scattered all over the place it's like there's a there's a store for cats <laughs> Here's a, there's a store for watches and that's the you know establishment where you can get something to eat it's all scattered all over the place there's just a mix of different things I do know that certain floors have certain products that they offer and certain services next to stores you also got, I presume, these are the people that are paying less rent, that are just sort of having a, a little market stand. Uh, and next to those, you have all kinds of different stores, including Western brands. I just came from Thailand and the Thai are not very, uh, they're not a bread eating, you know, culture. They started their day off with uh, curry and rice most of the times or, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to find some decent bread unless you go to the bigger malls, bigger expensive, more expensive malls in Thailand. But I can see that there are a lot of bake shops here and that's again, you know, the influence of the West and especially the United States. We have another bakery here. Cookies, pastries. Bread talk. And I do have to say, like, some of these bakers are pretty skillful. You got Japanese bake baking franchises, but Little bakeries like this as well. Six hundred and eighty pesos, Philippine pesos. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history of the Philippines and why it's so heavily influenced by the Spanish, who obviously colonized this country for a long time. Well, this mall also, uh, I mean, they have several events going on there, maybe on a daily basis even. You know, this is one of the places where they do it. It's a, you know, it's a doggy boot camp from what I can see from here. Uh, people bringing their pets. I don't understand what they're saying, but looks pretty fun. I didn't eat anything today and it's about, you know, what is it, 3 p.m.? So I think it's time, it's about time for some breakfast. Now I heard a lot of good things about Philippine barbecue, the sort of fusion between the Asian uh, Cantonese barbecue, the roast, and the traditional American barbecue. I don't know, but this looks pretty authentic to me, this little place called Cam's Roast and uh, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna try this. Uh, I'm interested. Yeah. Hello, sir. May I? Uh, oh, one person? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just sit, uh, sit here. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So on this menu right here, um, they got different variations of barbecue. And I wouldn't like to, you know, try this one right here, but that's me being 
my, my eyes being bigger than my stomach, I reckon, because maybe that's you know a bit too big of a dish for me to eat alone. So I think I'll just go for two meats and a couple of side dishes. They got jellyfish and sesame oil. I've never tried jellyfish before in my life, so I think that's a good one. Yes, sir, can I order? Uh, roast duck and uh, crispy pork. On and rice, sir? You want on rice or on noodles? Uh, on noodles, please. Uh, what, rice or soup? Uh, uh, is, uh, so separate. What is better? Uh, I think braised. I'll take braised. And then I'd like to order the cucumbers okay, sir. and the jellyfish. And one water, please. Let's see how it goes. I got a good feeling. First two dishes here. Pretty common dishes. I mean, I've seen it a lot of times. There's the marinated cucumber, which is a good appetizer. And the second one is the sesame jellyfish. You want to try the jellyfish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks. Yeah, right. I got some camera assistance, thankfully. Otherwise, you got to set this whole thing up. So, do you take little bites or big bites? I'll just a little. Just a little bit, huh? Go. Kind of looks like noodles a bit, like yeah. spaghetti. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. It uh, reminds me of the seaweed salad yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the same texture. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, I could eat this. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I was expecting it to be, to be more like an oyster, you know? A bit more the, the, the slimy texture of it, but actually it's not. It's got a nice bite to it, so uh, yeah, I like it. Okay, sir. Is the soup separated? That's the broth. Yes, and this is the duck and the crispy. Oh wow, it looks great. And this sauce is for the crispy pork. Right. Lamb sauce for the duck. For the duck. Yeah, and gravy also for the duck if you want. Right, the gravy also put it up. Yeah. Great, looks great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It does. I mean, I am a, I am a sucker for these uh, crispy pork things, man. I mean, uh, I would eat this every day if it wouldn't turn, if it wouldn't turn me into like some blow up, blown up guy, man. I, I have to take it easy. I have to take it easy before I put, you know, the weight back on. You know, I worked so hard for the last couple of months to get rid of it. You know, uh, for your information, I've lost about uh, 25 kilograms in the past uh, six months. Uh, not by dieting, but just by, uh, you know, going ahead in the gym. Uh, just, you know, just dying during kickbox and box training and running and stuff like that. So, I'm trying to keep it down to two meals a day because, uh, yeah, I feel better, you know? I feel better when I'm a bit hungry. I feel better when I'm a bit, you know, energetic. And I know I'm always full of food, but once in a while I treat myself to something like this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I will, uh, I will not use the chopsticks to embarrass myself because uh, I don't really have good chopstick skills. This one is for the pork, right? Yes, sir. All right. Mustard. It's yes, with mustard. Yes, mustard. Very good. What I like about Southeast Asia, you always get a little bit of soup, a little bit of broth to get your, your food down and to add to the flavor. And now, for the star of the show, probably, the roasted duck. Just get that bone out of here. This is the duck sauce, right? Yes, this sir. one right here. Yep. This is the plum sauce. That's it. We also got this gravy right here, which is even better, I think, with the with the pork, the crispy pork. I tried to make roast pork once myself, but uh, I got a big piece. I was all looked up the ingredients and. Uh, the way to make it on the internet, but didn't work out because I brought the the, pig, the pork meat without without the skin on it. So it's kind of hard to get crispy skin if the meat doesn't have skin. That's one has though. Yes, it's it's very good. Um, I finished eating. I uh, 
I liked it very much. But I can see over there. Maybe you can tell me something about it, about the the, 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 the article. Yeah, this is Mr. Kam. Uh, is he the founder? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, from Ch generation okay. from a UK restaurant at uh, Singapore. Ah, okay. And and these are and these are news stories made about. So actually, this is a famous this this is a famous restaurant actually. Okay. Hi. The ruling roast. You can see that founders over there. Right. And there are several different uh, news articles about them. Paper articles. Yeah, it's very nice, very nice. Yeah, I'll just uh, take a little glimpse in the, in the kitchen here. They have open kitchens here in the Philippines often at the times. It was great, guys, thank you. <laughs> and this is their famous signature dish. The duck. And the pork. That's right, uh, um, well, 824 which is about 14 bucks right <laughs> you're not gonna find those prices back in Europe or in the United States anyway sir it was very nice to meet you what's your yes. name Eric Joy Eric Joy yeah. very nice to meet you all right guys all the best thank to you Tony. thank you bye bye all right on our way again after being replenished by some fine roast barbecue that's right You know what the good thing about vlogging is? People totally accept the fact that you're talking to yourself. You're vlogging, right? You can talk to yourself as much as you want. Nobody pays attention to you. Hey, what's up, sir? Hey, what are you selling? Rent-owned condo, sir. Oh, really? You're selling? Investment. So you're a real estate yes, agent? Yes, sir. All right, so how many condos have you sold today? Uh, only one. Only one? Yes. Well, well, only one? I mean, that's probably very good, right? I mean, do you, do you sell a condo a day? Yes. Wow. For Same. rent or to buy? Same. So how much would one condo be? Sir. sir. Yes, uh, hello, guys. It depends on the size of the unit, sir. It depends uh, on the size. So we are offering uh, 6,000 pesos per month. That's of course to the unit. Then for one bedroom, sir, we're offering 9,000 per month. And for the biggest one, which is the two bedrooms, we offer 15,000 per month. Oh yeah, you guys. Yeah. What, what are you guys representing? We are representing Empire East. No, but he he you represented something with his hands. Now, yeah, you, can, you can do it again, man. You can you can rep, you can represent your neighborhood. So, are you from Manila? Yeah, yeah. All right. What neighborhood? Malate, 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 Manila. You sir. You can take a shot also with our hey, mom, units. Ah, okay, right. Cool. Yeah, Marcos. I will. I will. Yeah. See, so they're selling real estate here as well. Back it's here. I'm, I'm just wondering, right? As a yes, foreigner, sir. I have no nationality from Philippines. Yes, can sir. I can I rent here or not? Yes, sir. You can acquire your property uh, if it's a condo, but you can't acquire uh, your property here if it's a house and lot. If you want to have your investment here in the Philippines, sir, that this would be a great uh, idea. Is real estate going up the prices in Manila and Philippines? Is it? Uh, not just in the Philippines, but it's all over the world. The prices of real estate it always goes up. Yeah. Uh, it always uh, appreciates its value. Right, right. Yes, so it's a good investment, you would say. Yes, sir. If right. uh, if if it's for an investment or for personal use, it's it's really a good investment. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good Thank luck. You. Thank bye, you. bye. Well, there you have it, folks. Investing in real estate, it's good. The guy throwing, the real estate agent throwing up a bit of a gang signs over there. <laughs> no, I have to be honest, you know, I like Manila, I like visiting new places and I like metropoles, but I wouldn't want to live in one because it probably would be too much of, you know, it's just too crowded, man. It's just too crowded. Some laser tag over there. And yes, they do have a skating a skate. 
ice skating hall here in the mall. Why not, right? Let's see how the ice skating skills of the Filipino people are. Something tells me it's not on the same level as in Canada, you know what I mean? <laughs> not that I'm Canadian, but... Some of these guys got some skills. And that one dude is ice skating in shorts and t-shirt. I mean, I, <laughs> I've never done that before. Ah, this little dude fell down. Joint. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's packed with kids. I have to say, you know, although it's crowded and although there are loads and loads of shops and all thing, kinds of things to do, this is nowhere as chaotic as, you know, the streets of Manila. It's all neat, organized, and uh, you know I have to say you know a lot more expensive too than uh, out on uh, out on the street. Hello. Roast, roast, everybody roast. And Tex Max, you know, telling about the influence of American culture. The Filipinos love themselves in Tex Max, so now I'm done. Look at this. It's really hard to make a decision what to eat in a place like this. Uh, really, I think it may be a thousand. A thousand. Oh my god, what's going on over there? We got some uh, some dancers over there. But first. Oh, sorry, sorry. No video. It's gambling going on here. It's a bingo night or something. Yeah, bingo playing. <coughs> Choreography, uh, dancing lessons over here, and over here as well. People are dancing, rehearsing maybe for some show. It's like an ant colony in here. People and people and layers and layers. Stores, commerce, buy, sell, eat. Oh. So, 
just a white guy walking by, <laughs> older uh, white gentleman, just giving me the nod like, hello, hello there fellow Caucasian. I have to say, I mean, for, you know, a metropole city, there's not a lot of foreigners here. It's like 99.9% .9 Filipino. When you're walking in Bangkok, you can see foreigners, expats, well, uh, tourists all over the place. And it's not the case here.